Okay, a number three on a comp test is testing to see can you subtract a whole number and a decimal. And it's written like this for a reason. It's not set up for you because part of that test for you is that can you figure out how you need to line them up. And I just gave you a hint. If I have 600 and I'm taking away like 8, what's 600 take away 8? Five hundred ninety-two. So, an estimated answer is about five hundred ninety-two. If I subtract and I get something totally different, then I know I've made a mistake. Okay. My suggestion is that you look at this like it's money. If I'm going to write six hundred dollars, how would I write that? Six zero zero. Yeah, your decimal belongs here. In any whole number, it's always at the end. So six hundred dollars minus eight dollars and twenty-three cents. Notice what I did with my decimals? Line it, up. line it up. Do you always have to line up your decimals when you subtract? Yes. yes. What about when you add? No. Yes. No. Yes. Same thing. Adding and subtracting of decimals, you've got to line them up. So before I even start, I'm going to go ahead and bring my decimal down. Now, we're borrowing from zeros again. All of these, I finally can borrow from the six, which becomes a five. What did I say about all these other zeros in between? Uh, nine. They don't get its full value, right? I borrowed. This one's the only one that's going to become a 10. So that's a 9, that's a 9, that's a 9. Finally, 10. 10 take away 3? 7. Seven. 9 take away 2? 9 and 8? 9 and nothing? Nine. 5 and nothing. Five. Okay, $591 per se and 77 cents. Is there a way to check this? Yeah. Oh, well look, yes, there is a way to check, but you brought up a good point. This number is very similar to my estimated answer. So I'm right. This is the number that I want. So we can double check by adding 7 and 3, 7 and 2 carry the 1, 8 and 1 is going to be 10 and 9. So I end up getting 600 if I were to add these two together. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and check it.